U.S. Water Rocket, Water Rocket Construction and Demonstration Video, the U.S. Water Rocket's Radio Parachute Deploy System. Much of our ongoing research focuses on refining and improving water rocket systems to make them more reliable and easier to build. One area in which we have spent a great deal of time is the water rocket parachute deploy system, since it is the key to safely recovering a rocket and payload, and all the time, materials, and labor that went into building them. Our future plans happen to include some fragile and expensive payloads, so we decided that we needed to invent a parachute system that was more reliable than anything that had ever been flown before. As it turned out, the system we eventually made is also the simplest to make and the most flexible concept ever created. By flexible, we mean that it can be easily adapted to single and multiple bottle rockets and can be placed almost anywhere on the rocket's fuselage, even near the tail section, if you prefer to have it located there. We have dubbed this new design the U.S. Water Rocket's Radial Parachute Deploy System and it is a huge departure from traditional systems because it relies on only one moving part. Thanks to the great flexibility of the system, there are virtually infinite variations of the radial deploy concept. The construction tutorial companion to this video located on our website, uswaterrockets.com, illustrates methods for adapting the system to all of the common rocket types. Let's begin by showing how the system is added to the top of our traditional splice bottle rocket. We begin at the top bottle of the rocket with the nose cone removed. The parachute trigger mechanism that you choose is up to you, be it a Tomy timer, servo motor, or anything else that you may invent. Whichever you choose, it will be housed in a payload compartment that must be attached to the top of the rocket. For this example, we are making a removable compartment that is attached by threading it into an inverted bottle cap secured to the existing cap on the top of the rocket using tape. To make our payload compartment, a bottle is cut in half and the neck portion is threaded into the cap we just taped at the top of the rocket. A support bulkhead is needed next. It can be cut from a sheet of cardboard, balsa, or coraflute and sized so that it can fit in the payload compartment. The trigger mechanism is then attached to the support bulkhead. In this case, we are showing a servopron servo timer, which we attach with Velcro tape. We mount our servo motor to the support bulkhead as well. For this, we use double sided tape or cable ties. The support bulkhead is now inserted into the payload compartment and it can be held in place by friction in most cases. You can also secure it with tape, glue, nylon screws, or whatever you prefer. A hole is now drilled in the side of the payload compartment to provide access to the trigger mechanism. The nose cone can then be attached to the top of the payload compartment. The next step is to take a parachute and fold it leaving about a three-foot length of the main shroud line loose and tying the end securely to the neck of the bottle at the top of the rocket fuselage. See the parachute making tutorial on our website if you want to learn how to make a parachute. The folded parachute is then stowed in the narrow area where the payload compartment screws to the top of the rocket. The final piece that we fabricate is the cover for the parachute. This is made from a cylindrical section of a bottle with the top and the bottom cut off which is then cut vertically and flattened out to form a rectangular sheet of plastic. We prefer cutting the parachute cover from a bottle which is larger than that which the rocket is made from. This will ensure that it is long enough to go all the way around the fuselage with about an inch of overlap. Multiple flattened bottle pieces can optionally be glued together if you cannot find a bottle large enough to make the parachute cover from. A hole is then made in one edge of the parachute cover and the midpoint of the main shroud line is tied to the cover using this hole as a tie point. The excess parachute main shroud line is gathered in a loose bundle and pinned behind the parachute as we wrap the parachute cover around the bottles. This fills in the narrow spot between the bottlenecks and encloses the parachute inside. Another hole is punched in the bottom outside corner of the parachute cover where it overlaps itself. This is the place where we will secure a long rubber band to the cover. 
We then pull the rubber band very firmly to tightly constrict the parachute cover around the rocket. Now, we take the rubber band and wind it in a spiral pattern around the parachute cover. We do this several times until it reaches the hole in the payload compartment. We can then hook the rubber band onto the servo trigger mechanism. The multiple windings of the rubber band around the parachute cover will constrict it so tightly that it is almost impossible to move. If you need to adjust the alignment or position of the parachute cover, you will have to release the tension on the rubber band first. The radial deploy system is now complete. The way in which the radial deploy system works deserves some explanation. The method is so simple, it relies on only one moving part, the rubber band. When the deploy release is triggered, the rubber band is released, and it will begin to unwrap itself as it unwinds from the parachute cover. The tightly wrapped rubber band reaches a very high speed as it swings around the rocket until it becomes fully unwrapped. At this moment, the rubber band is a swinging mass traveling at a very high speed and centripetal force simply pulls the parachute cover off the rocket, taking the parachute with it and deploying it. The design of this system eliminates unnecessary moving parts and places where the parachute can tangle or snag, which increases the reliability dramatically. This demonstration launch shows the radial deploy in action. You can see the rubber band unwinding at this moment in the video. Now you can see the parachute cover being pulled off. The parachute has now emerged and it quickly inflates. Here are some additional camera views of the launch. We've shared this new deploy system with everyone so that the design will help increase the reliability of water rockets and inspire others to think outside the box and come up with new ideas and innovations. We hope you get many successful flights from this design. If you like this video, you may be interested in our other water rocket videos, such as our easy parachute making tutorial, our axial deploy system tutorial, or our water rocket chase camera project. Don't forget to subscribe, and also don't forget to visit our website. We'll see you next time.